Saturday, September 22nd. I think this is the last day of summer, or the first day of fall. Uh, water's looking really calm today. I checked the wind, there's hardly any wind, two miles per hour. I picked up some uh, torpedo weights from uh, Mark and Bridget at Coastside because I'm going to do a catch and cook on silver perch. I've never seen anyone do it on silver. As a matter of fact, I've never seen anyone keep a silver perch. But they are actually a very tasty fish. They just don't get that big. They're not as small as shiners. And, um, but they probably get as big as walleye perch. You might have heard or seen of those before and often are mistaken to be the same species. But if you wanna make sure you identify fish properly, um, there is a book that's put out by the California Fish and Wildlife Department uh, called the Fish, California Fish, Fin Fish and something or the other. Fin Fish and Invertebrate. Um, but anyways, um, it's an identification book. And if you go to one of my last videos, I put, a, I put a couple of links out there. And then on my Facebook page as well, I put a link all you got to do is either call them, email them, or send them a letter, and they will send you a free ID book in the mail. I got mine about 15 years ago, but um, they are still giving them out free because I had a, a couple of um, people who made comments on my video ask about it, and they sent away, and one guy wrote back that yes, he did get his for free in the mail, so that's good to know. So, uh, but anyways, they're in abundance. They're starting to hit pretty hard right now at uh, Gray Well Cove. They come pretty small, but we are not gonna keep anything that is smaller than eight inches. Or if we happen to injure the fish's eye, then we'll keep it. Um, there's really, there's no size limit on it. It's just when they're smaller, you just want them to have a little bit longer to live and enjoy their lives before you eat them. And uh, when they get to eight inches, they're, um, they're full grown. Now for today, the barometric pressure, right now it's about, let's see, it's almost 11 o'clock. Um, I'm gonna, um, I'm not gonna bring my waders, you know, it's really cumbersome to carry your waders with you and then carry them back out. If you're just gonna fish from the shore and you're not gonna be worried, I mean, you don't, you don't really need to get in the water to catch silver perch. You can just throw from the sand. Throw it a couple of feet out and you can catch the limit in no time. But uh, yes, I don't want to put on my waders to catch the sand crabs that I'm going to use to catch these with. That's what I'm going to use for bait. The alternative, and I think I did this on a video about almost about a year ago when I started this channel, um, an alternative to putting on waders or just putting on shorts and going barefooted, which you can do, is that what you can do is you can put on shorts and I bought these, um, these surfing booties from NorCal Surf Shop. Excellent booties. They're like form fit and uh, they got really great traction on them. And I bought the top of the line. I told the guy, I just want to see the best thing you got here. And that's the one that I bought because usually you buy something top of the line, uh, you pay for what you get. You buy something bottom of the line. The previous pair I had wasn't half as good as these ones are. These ones, uh, the sand, they fit so snugly on my feet that the sand doesn't even get in the booty. So I put these on, you know, 10, 15 minutes until I catch the sand crabs I need. And then, um, and then I take them off, dry my feet off, and, uh, you know, put my, put my boots back on and uh, go to work fishing. So... Get my pick up my 7 Eleven coffee. Drinking that right now. Yeah, I expect it to be real calm out there. These little silver perch, they uh, lay pretty hard. Uh, I expect it about noon, noon for it to really pick up. See a real hard bite out there. Well, I'm gonna, the sand crabs I'm going to use are gonna be smaller than the ones I normally catch. I won't be worried so much about eggs and stuff because silver perch are a smaller perch and thus you need like a smaller piece of bait. They will bite on the bigger ones, but it'll take you much longer 
in order to catch them because they'll bite a little bit here, a little bit there. They'll tear the bigger sand crabs apart piece by piece. Whereas you put on these little ones that I'm going to show you, um, it's just a mouthful, a bone. And every once in a while, you might get lucky and uh, catch one of the, the bigger species of perch as well. So, but the main the main focus today is to get catch five eight inch or bigger silver perch. I actually brought a chair down today. I'm feeling kind of lazy. There's my fishing vest. I carry, um, you know, those uh, grub grub worms from, uh, you know, grubs and, and those kind of things in there and, uh, and some hooks, other things, uh, scissors. I've got a knife inside my, my fishing vest, things I need to get to right away. The fish holder, which I'm not going to need with the silver perch. Um, I usually need them with like uh, the barred perch with the big mouth and or anything bigger. Rockfish, striper, that kind of thing. Got a couple of buckets. Normally I keep that one for bait and put the catch in there. But uh, since we're just catching silvers today, it's probably overkill. Probably could have done with just the smaller bucket or just the bigger one. Nice to have a bucket with a lid on it because the birds will come and steal your fish when you're not paying attention. So... And it's very easy on the beach also to lose your bucket lid. Very easy. Just as it is easy to lose your bucket, I've seen guys put it up way too close and it goes out and, you know, goodbye bucket. Here's what we need here to, um, to uh, catch the small sand crabs. There's that uh, ranger net I was telling you about. There's my bait bucket that goes around. It's, a, it's got a bait, it's got a waist belt on it. And that goes around my uh, waist shorts it's all you really need but if you want to protect your feet you wear something like this these are booties that i picked up from uh, norcal surf shop in pacifica great place one ounce weight torpedo see with all those shells out there this will just be coming through the the bottom it'll be dragging across the bottom like that and it'll pick up fewer of those uh, muscle shells that are all over the place but um yeah, you could very easily catch silver perch with a sabiki, but we're not going to do that. You never would know what luck might bring you, and if you catch a striper, a keeper striper, on a sabiki, you have to put it back. That's not playing by the rules. Here's the reel I got. This is also a fluger. The pole's a fluger. Six-pound Cajun line, my favorite line. And again, I got this for uh, freshwater fishing, but I haven't taken it out once. So we're going to use it out here for the smaller fish and um, should work just fine for silver perch. Booties right there. You can see how they fit right against my leg and uh, that's nice to have. This ones also have the, um, the individual toe. Or, but uh, yeah, see that tight fit right down there around the lower part of my legs? Okay, that's what you want because it keeps the sand out. So when I go out there like this, I don't have to worry about the sand getting all up in these booties here. that we would normally keep because it has the eggs of course the eggs this time of year aren't as brilliant as they are i'm not really sure what that means maybe there's a marine biologist that could chime in or something maybe it means these eggs weren't fertilized and they're just going to waste i'm not really sure but this is a nice big sand crab which we're just throwing back for now here's what we want we want these smaller guys like this and preferably soft shell, but it doesn't really matter because these small little sand crabs here, oops, dropped that one. These small little sand crabs are soft anyways, regardless if they're soft shell or not. So, you know, you can save yourself a hassle of trying to catch a bunch of soft shells. Let's see if I can find one. This first batch here, I caught probably, you know, one good scoop and I got uh, probably, here we go. There's a soft shell sand crab, you see that? See how clear it is? That's what determines 
a soft shell sand crab. Right there. Nice view. What they look like. Any minute now he's gonna start moving his legs, I'm sure. It's like, okay, what is this? What's going on here? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> and uh, the fresher they are, not only do they move, you know, even after you put them on the, the hooks, but the fresher are, the more they stay on the hook, they won't fall off as easy. I mean, I've even heard of some guys like um, taking these things and to freeze them, right? But uh, you could do that, but there's really no reason for that. I can catch sand crabs year round. You just gotta go to the right place, the right spot. And I've got tons of videos on it. Check this one out uh, here. But I don't really think they do a lot of thinking before they bite into something. If they're hungry enough, they'll bite hard or soft. Eggs or no eggs. Everything makes a difference and all depends. If some, there's another soft shell right there. Yeah. Soft shell sand crab. That one's starting to get kind of white. So it's like semi-soft, small one. That doesn't matter. I'm telling you. There's one that's like soft and it's a little bit bigger. So let's, let's try that one. Maybe we'll get you large surf perch on something like that. I mean, we're going to use number four hooks. So there's no telling what kind of surf perch are going to show up here today. Possibly even a striper, which would be interesting on this six and a half foot freshwater pole uh, with a one ounce weight. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I see guys do it, you know, and it, I guess it's a lot of fun to feel the fight and hear your drag your your drag going on. I mean, if you catch a big one you gotta you gotta really play with that drag. Otherwise it's gonna break the line. Six pound test that only holds up so much. Alright so this is a first cast for sure with this ball. That's what it looks like. Okay. Got your two sand crabs on your number size four hooks. One ounce torpedo weight. about keeping them if they're eight inches or bigger. I want five. I don't want to be greedy. I'm just feeding myself today. It's all I need. I have a nice fish, tasty fish fry. Look at that, huh? And it went after the big soft shell. Look at that. It fit the whole monstrosity of a soft shell crab right in its mouth there. This is a beautiful fish. Tasty fish too. Tasty fish. So I'm gonna show you. You would not believe it. it's the skin that really makes these guys. But the meat is also very delicious. So okay, that's a nine inch right there. It's eight, it's over eight inches, about eight and a quarter. Um, but like I said, there's no size requirement on it. This definitely is a silver perch. It's not a walleye. Walleye have bigger eyes. They have uh, black tips on their pelvic fins here. Okay, the walleye do. These guys don't have those black tips there. Um, this, uh, right now, I think the fish is a little shaken, so you can't see the orange in here. Kind of an orange, pinkish orange right in here. But this is a silver perch here. And we're just gonna catch five of these. You know what, I could probably even use this bait again. 
Bait's coming out, the hook's coming out. Yeah. And I bleed these out just like I do any of my other kits. So I'm gonna go take care of this now and put it in the bucket. Look at that, look at that. I'm gonna reuse this one here. This is a nice piece of bait. we will just kinda hook it. This is the one that looked like it had gotten stepped on, like that. They're gonna bite on that. And then you got the other one, again, take another small soft shell. I already showed you how these things fall off easier, the soft shell. The little hard shell ones actually work just as good, if not better. You won't lose them as easy, but when you're going for the silver, just put it on the end like that. Boom. Get right past where that, that little um, barb is, and it'll hang on there pretty good, and most likely you'll catch your fish. Or lose it. We'll see. Good way for kids to learn how to fish. You want to, you know, you got a boy or a girl that's interested in learning how to fish this time of year. You guys are out there. Look at that. Look at that. He's getting that bite again. Uh, Starting with a small hole like this one here. I think this whole setup here cost me probably somewhere between 35 and 50 bucks. Maybe 60. Fishing. I think I have one on there. When I first started fishing, I first started off catching perch. They were lake perch. And they were probably this size or maybe even smaller. I don't know. We used to um, go to this place. And, um, there was a lake called Morrill's Mud Hole. <laughs> Lots of us kids called it anyway. Kids that fished there. And we'd go catch about two perks this size. We'd put one in this pocket and we'd go. All we had was little bamboo sticks with some fishing line, maybe six feet of fishing line attached to it. And the weight was just a little, um, those little weights, those, um, those uh, split shot weights. There we go. Here's another eight inch one. There's another eight inch perch. So now we just need to catch three more of these. We have our little uh, pan fry. This one right here in the bucket. Clean them up. You see that? All right, well, let's put some more of them soft shell crabs on there. Seeing crabs, that is, on there. Um, they've been working so well. Look at, soft shell. Look at this one. Things are monstrous. I can almost cut these in half and put half on each hook, but I think what I'll do is I'll just use the method of putting the legs up where the point is. Um, I do have a video on how to hook these up. Uh, this is one of the ways you do it. It's usually the way I do it when I have a soft shell because it'll hold it a little bit better. Just kind of flip it over like that so it's in there on two points and fish will bite in there. Okay, so, um, oh, I didn't mention that. Yeah, so look at the shorter leader. I haven't had any trouble with this wrapping itself around um, the rest of the line, and uh, a lot less trouble. And plus with the two ounce uh, weight, which I think is probably the max weight that uh, with this pull. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two ounces, that's it, you know. Um, any more than that, and uh, it's gonna be too much for this ball here. That's what our setup looks like now with the shorter leader to the hook. Okay, just like it's spinning around like that and nothing's getting tangled. Okay, some small silvers were eating right there. Now it's a little bit farther. I could still use a spade and they'll be hitting the point there. That's what I want them to hit. That little point. So start right back into the same we spot. The shells, even with the uh, pyramid weight turned of the rock fishing way, we still got those cells snagged around us here. No big deal. Pull these off here. Well, I felt that extra weight on there, but there wasn't anything moving, so I knew it wasn't a fish. Um, you know what I might try now? Silver's out there, but I'm 
I think right now maybe they're not that hungry. Maybe they went through a free a feeding spree a little bit earlier in the day. And but what you can do as a bait fisherman, a neat thing that I've learned, is you can whet their appetite with something that tastes so good they just can't resist it. Um, but uh, all this right out here, see, all these are empty. I don't see. I'm gonna check these first. But if not, I'm gonna go out there on the rocks and I'm gonna pull a couple of mussels off. And uh, mussel is like the bacon of the surf. There's the bacon of the sea. I don't, I don't go out there on boats, so I have no idea what happens on the boats. I've tried it, but it just doesn't work with me, so I don't go on boats. I stay on the surf. This mussel, I've caught every kind of fish, including striper, on mussel before. Uh, they just can't resist. It's just like so stinky and smelly. And the fish that's just like delicious. These guys here, they like eating them, but they don't really have that much scent to them. These sand crabs. Now if they've been eating these all day already, they're kind of bored with it and you know they're not gonna bite into it, even if they are right there, which I believe they are. So we're gonna throw some bacon in the water. Muscle, rock muscle. And see if we can stimulate the appetite and um, catch uh, three more of these. We, uh, we've got two in the bucket so far, two eight inches, and we want to catch five. So that's our goal, and we're gonna do it. And the sun's starting to come out. That's usually a good sign. More, uh, more sun, more visibility in the water. Um, so let's see if we can find some muscle. Look what washes up, and there's some good muscle in here, too. <laughs> well, this is the bonus dealio right here. Probably muscles I'll just put back, but I'm gonna use what I need to catch my five silver perch. Okay, there we go. There's the setup. Look at how juicy that is. That's gonna attract some fish. All right, well, um, either the fish are too small, I'm not hooking them, which is good. I'd rather not hook a too small fish. Or, perhaps it's just something about that hook that I'm using right now that's not working. These have worked awfully well. These are um, Eagle Claw, size four. Um, probably better with size six. That's it. I'll say that right now. I, I thought I had size six out here, but um, I don't. Uh, a little bit sharper. And I've been using Eagle Claw all my life. Not for any real particular reason, it's just that the guys at the bait shop seem to always carry Eagle Claw. So that's what I buy. So we're going to put two of these on there. We're going to shorten the leader on them. And maybe we'll put the leader out a little bit. We'll see. And we'll throw it out there and see if we start hooking the, the rest of the silvers we're trying to catch for this kitchen cup. Which is, I said the limit today for me, on five. Five eight inches. So far we've got two. Along with the, um, they come with these leaders, and you can see they're not wrapping around the line like the other guys were. That's nice. a little miniature barred surf perch. You see that? That'd be nice with a couple of um, 
The big one showed up, so let's uh, release this guy. That's got to really hurt, hanging from your lip like that. That's not too cool. So, let's get this guy back in the water. There we go. Trying not to hurt it. some muscles. It's just a small uh, silver. Probably too small to keep. I don't know. Let's see. Let's bring it up. Bring it up. Oh. Yeah, I normally wouldn't keep this. However, fish hook went through the eye. Well, I guess this will have to be due for number three. Wouldn't be right to put this fish back. It's not going to make it. So, there's fish number three. Kind of a small one. Um, not even worth measuring. Let's see. I'd say about six inches. So, still a very tasty fish. Okay, look at this one here. This is a pretty big silver here. Um, didn't even know it was on there until I pulled it out of the water. Look at that. Huh? That's not bad. That's definitely an eight or nine inch, and it just didn't have much life about it. Well, I don't know what happened. Had enough life to bite onto that uh, muscle there, but uh, this is about a nine inch, let's say. Okay, let's measure this guy. Okay, right there. So it looks like it's eight inches, okay. All right, so we just need one more. Hey, I got another eight-incher. <laughs> I didn't even know it was on there. I was like, hmm, you know, I had a few bites and four days, I think I'm going to put it on top. with these uh these silvers today but they don't have a lot of energy left vincent was saying that maybe um you know maybe they've been chased by bigger fish and they're just all tired out or whatever but i just felt like a heavy something on there again i thought that i had i thought that i had caught um some more of these mussel shells but uh, that's close enough to eight. I think we'll call it, we'll call it so that we can go cook. We got five of these now, five servers. That's more than enough for a meal for one person. So we'll go do our little um, fry up uh, catch and cook with silvers. Number five. Well, let's measure them just to see what it is. That's close enough. Like I said, it's just a personal limit that I put on it. There is no size limit on these uh, by the Department of wildlife whoops the only limit they got is that you could take 10 of these uh, so what I do is I take eight inches or bigger or if I hook it through the eye yeah this one is just just about right there eight inches good enough for me yeah the bottom of that tail hits right on the eight inch line and this is a nice tape by the way I could see the eight I could see all the inches on this side and then you could see it there it's a perfect uh, measuring the stick for uh, YouTube. There we go, number five. Yeah, see, look at, there's no energy in this guy. Look at that. They're all pooped out today. I don't know what it is.